and we are live yay so welcome to i can't believe it's week four already um week four of um sarah with purpose which we will come on to in a minute but was actually created in a conversation with andrew and mark um just a few weeks ago so um yes you were to thank for all of this and so tonight we have got andrew edwards and mark waldron who amongst many other things um head up and run move so i'll hand over to you guys to introduce yourselves it doesn't have to be a quintro it can be a little bit more in depth tonight go on angela you go first I mean, <laughs> uh, thank you, Mark. Uh, my name is Andrew Edwards, and I am one half of Move Business. Uh, we are a business and personal development company who are passionate about making better human beings. We have an online function, we have a training function, and we have a real life function, I suppose, after COVID as well. But we haven't quite sort of explored that yet. Um, we want to reach out to the world and do sort of um, uh, away days, retreats, and just educating people um in a way that's never been done before so we have a, a global presence we're in the uk and we're in america and my name is andre and i'll hand over to mark now he's finished eating i don't know what to say now because you've just said everything that that we do oh so, there's far more mark you're very good at doing far more um i mean i mean i may think i usually have a big move top on but i've got, a, I've got a, i'm looking at the screen now it's like the opposite way but I've got a little okay. move but it's move and that's the, the little v's like you know it's that way and it means move and move means move forward in life move forward in business and your knowledge anyway you can move physically or mentally well, move your plate out the way um that's that's what it's for to encourage people to be uh, ultimately uh, the mission to move the better human beings we want people just physically or mentally moving because if you do that every day you're going to be better off and that's the whole idea so it's the type of thing we are passionate about it. It's something both Angie and I have done all our lives. In whether we've you know had jobs early on in our careers or own businesses, we've always been the type of people that encourage people to be better. Uh, so it makes total sense that we both coach people. We both are in move online, uh, and we're going to be doing as Angie said retreats. Um, we've got online courses, and there's plenty of other stuff in the in the pipeline for the future. It's very exciting, and I know some of the people that are joining us now, so people are just starting to say hi. So, hey to everybody watching. Feel free to pop any questions in there. Um, you can, and I'll catch up with those as we go through. But just to start us off, then, where what was your backgrounds before Move, and how you? Because I love the story of how you two came together anyway, and how you started this business in lockdown. But what was your backgrounds before that? Um, what kind of businesses and things did you have before? Mark, you go first this time. Well, you go first. Okay. <clears throat> in, I suppose, when I first come out of sort of school, I was in retail for probably three years, uh, working in Burton's and principals, if anyone remembers the principals. Yeah. And, um, so it was all retail, selling suits and this type of thing. And I ended up leaving that job eventually because he got put into some other departments in a, a department store called Lewis's in Liverpool, if anyone knows that. Um, the the manager there was total idiots, basically. You know, now that I look back, I think, what he, need, he needs to be coached by us now, I think. Um, but he was terrible. And I just left one day. And he went, you can't leave. And I said, you've got to hand your notice in. And I literally wrote out the notice there and then in front of him. I said, dear Kev, please accept my notice as of now. There you go. See you soon. And I just walked out. And I walked down the corner into the job centre I mean, literally did, there was like 10 jobs I sort of printed off, you printed these slips off, went home, didn't do anything with them. And a week later, my dad said, you should, should get yourself a job, you know? And I was like, yeah, that's probably a good idea. Picked up, looked through them and thought, okay, that, that one doesn't look too bad. And it was in a call centre, ended up getting a job. Literally they called, they said, yeah, can you come in like in two hours for an interview? I was like, okay, yeah. Went in, went in, had the interview, got it. Only just about past the training because they didn't have a clue about how to speak to people on the phone me tone and voice with everything was just terrible i was just used to speaking to people face to face and luckily i just about got the job but six months later i'd learned everything about his info the phone and every, i learned everything there was to know about it or learned customer service and all this stuff and end up being a trainer for vodafone for two years oh, so wow. all stuff up. and then I, that got me in, introduced into helping people and wanting to see you know doing it doing something with someone whether it's for five minutes or a two-hour session or a day and at the end 
they've got some new skills that they can do something with. Yeah. Um, and from there, for like that was in my, when I was early twenties. Throughout my twenties, it was working there. Then I got a new job in a HR department in Whittle Council. Then back into another call centre. Then worked for a guy in a, a heating supplier who sold sold boilers and radiators and stuff. And I just I, I got to the point where I thought I need to just be doing my own thing. Yeah, and I yeah. like the idea of being in a trade. Uh, that was why I got the job in the heating supplier. But I just could never seem to find a job. Didn't have any good networking skills back then either. And eventually, just sort of got to the final call centre I worked in. I'm on there. Just got 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 pally with a guy in a gym. Owned a construction company. About six months later, ended up working for him, and that's what got me on the road to owning a construction company, which I had for ten years. And I literally stopped trading in there to start move, which is me my true passion. So that was like just over a year ago, wasn't it? Year and a half well, ago. when you come to um networking events and move online and everything else you've got a wide variety of experience in all different kinds of sectors as well so it's not just i always thought that you just worked in the construction really yeah no I, the reason i was good in construction and the reason we were super successful there was mostly down to the customer service which had learned through all those other you know elements of of like my life working in face to face in a in a retail store working on the phone in a call center working dealing with trades from a uh, behind the counter um working in hr being in so many different jobs varied you just pick up loads off especially if you're working around other people who've, who've done those particular jobs for years yeah you, you will, uh, well at least if you if you've got a, a good head on your shoulders you will pick up the good tips and traits and um you know values from the people who've been doing it a while um, and obviously discard the ones that you don't like yeah so andrea tell us a little bit about your background because i know for the last 12 months particular um yours has been probably the most challenging industry ever so tell us a little bit about what you used to do how you've adapted that okay so um very very long time ago i lived in la um, I just to give you a, an understanding of my amazing life in, in Los Angeles. Um, my next door neighbor was Olivia Newton John. I worked for two movie directors who were multi multi millionaires, and um, I drove around in a convertible Mercedes in my twenties and lived a life of Riley, spending a lot of time in Beverly Hills, and it was a bit wow. But I realised I was on borrowed time. It really wasn't my life, so I came back to the UK um, and I started um, a training management position at McDonald's. Um, I'll be really honest, um, it was a, a, a job to fill a gap. And I think my parents at the time were quite devastated that I was going to be working for McDonald's. I thrived, I grew, I learned, and it was the best time of my life. I was there for 20 years. Um, I, I went through the, the ranks of McDonald's um, and got promoted from assistant manager to store manager to general manager to supervisor to operation consultant to um, um, my last role uh, was operations manager, where I had a turnover of 50 million and a couple of four and a half thousand staff under me. Um, and then prior to that, I was marketing manager for McDonald's too. So I um, spent a lot of time in Chicago, spent a lot of time working my way through the marketing world of McDonald's, which was just incredible. And yes, I went to Hamburger University, and there is one, and it does exist, and I graduated from Hamburger University. Um, but what that did was made me... Um, an, an amazing business person and I learned so much from process and systems of what I do. I'm very analytical, um, always people first. But um, I had two kids, I was never at home, I lived out of hotels, I did my own schedule, nobody was pressurizing me, but I was just thriving and growing and in this corporate world of a massive machine. And then I realized that if I didn't do something soon, I would miss my kids' sports days and I'd miss my kids' um, you know, parents' evenings. So I quit, which is very, very unusual for the level of job I was at McDonald's. And I set myself up as a business coach 12 years ago. And I've thrived, always had a waiting list, and been hugely successful doing that. And as a sideline, I decided I was going to open a business um, in hospitality around pancakes and waffles, which is my passion for when I worked in America. My pancake, pancakes are my passion, but not for making them, just eating them. <laughs> But you know what? I'm not a big pan pancake eater. I don't really like coffee either. But I knew there was a massive gap in, mar in the market in the UK. So I started a business um, eight years ago and we grew to um, 10. From Kingston on Thames in the south, Birmingham, Nottingham, Rotherham, Liverpool, Preston. Um, so 
That's literally around the corner from me. Rotherham. We had a space in Rotherham. Oh, wow. Yeah. We were on the retail park, Parkgate. We were on. Yes. Next to Argos. Yes. Oh, my and God. We, I never knew this. Yes. Yeah. So we had a space there, which was an amazing space. We learned so much in Rotherham because it was a very different market. Um, yes. Can you imagine? So, so um, yeah. So, hope it hit um and i'd always been doing my 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 coaching in the background and and had set up process systems in the business so everybody else was running the business and i would just pop in and pop out and and do appraisals and and, and sort of do menu development and that type of stuff um and then when covid hit i had a huge amount of money locked up in in all my businesses um and it was just literally everything just stopped that day well i i closed i closed 10 days before the government closes because we were hemorrhaging so much cash yeah. um but I'd always have, luckily for me, I'd always have my coaching going. So I obviously I still had those clients. Um, and I had a passion that I wanted to do something around retreats and bringing people to the north of the UK uh, to do speech uh, speaking events. And I had a, a coaching program I really wanted to work with. Um, and then I was in a dreadful place. Vulnerability, I, I really showed how, how I felt as a business owner. Um, and I was really struggling and I needed a little bit of a, a space to become me again rather than the business owner that was sinking because all my business were closed. And somebody told me to check out Mark uh, Waldron because he'd started Move Online. Um, and I did. And this is the message I sent to Mark. Hi, Mark. Love to come to one of your events. And he said, yeah, great. We've got one on, on Wednesday, 7 a.m. I wrote a bit early for me. <laughs> what? Why? I used to be on the train. I used to be on the 10 to 6 train to London every other week. I used to be in my car driving to Rotherham at 6.30. Time was not an issue. I just did it. But in that moment in COVID, 7 a.m. in my own house was too early. Yeah, I agree. In true Mark style, he wrote back, that's fine. Sure. That's fine. When you're ready, you'll know. Something like that. He's very good at those kind of things so that you get yeah. things, don't you? You go, oh, it, it's knows it's annoying <laughs> and so i went I, I i think about an hour or two i must check the timings of it i thought what am i thinking what am i doing so i said oh i think i can make it i think i can make it what's all that about anyway it's you not my worst and said i'll try and make it i don't try which means no doesn't it in our language exactly. and, and that really was where i was mentally i was in a very very dark place and i didn't know where i was going um you know i had a hundred and a hundred plus staff who were relying on me for a job and I didn't know if I could keep them in a job. Um, so I needed something for me. Um, I had my clients, which I had a big strong face for, and I had all these staff that expected me just to have answers and I didn't have the answers. And it went on move online and it was just like a breath of fresh air. And within 14 days and two face-to-faces, Mark and I made a decision to set up a business together. We have never met at this point. All this is online. I'll tell story. Laura, so, Laura's on and she's saying, yep, it's so annoying that he's right. <laughs> so we all think you're right, Mark, but we also find it a slight bit yeah, annoying. Yeah. But you can take that, Shula. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so you set up a business together having never, ever met. That's nope. it. So what do you think it was that just clicked? Was it, was it a certain word you used? Was it a certain conversation? Did you just get that vibe or what was it? I'd say it was just, you know, when you get when you have a one-to-one -one with someone for the first time, you're just talking about, you know, so what are you doing? What are you doing? What, what, where, are you, where are you going? Like, what's your goal? And everything I was saying, <clears throat> or Angie was saying, was like, oh, yeah, well, that's funny enough. That's what I'm going to be doing as well. Yeah, retreats, yeah, yeah. And all this stuff, yeah, coaching, online courses. And it's like, well, I'm looking to do all that. And I have all, I mean, for about the last two years i would say or oh, sorry two years before a year ago or six months ago i would always be saying to steph my wife like hey working on my own i'm too stupid to be like working on my own i i'll procrastinate i won't i'm motivated but i'll i'll let myself off it you know if it's a sunny day in the summer i'll sunbathe for two hours or something whereas really i should be working and I thought if I have some, I'd much be better, be much better working with someone. Um, and I didn't, I didn't set out to find a business partner, but I was certainly, it was on my radar. Like if anyone ever passes me, passes by, I'd be like, oh dear, let's let's have a chat. And I, even when I spoke to Andrew, I didn't initially think, oh, this could be the one. 
we just happened to say yeah, this the one. Oh, it's only like by, only by looking back, I thought, that, isn't that strange that I was thinking it? Oh, like for two years, and without even thinking, oh, Angie must be this person that maybe I could go into business with. We just did anyway, and it was only when I looked back, I'm like, I would start. I've got someone who pushes me. I push Andrea. Oh yeah. Yeah, that we both achieve more together than what we both would singularly doing our own thing which is a if you look at anybody you know anybody in the world massive companies apple microsoft bill gates didn't build it on his own steve jobs didn't build it on his own they've all had at least one other person usually a team of people and that's where they move even though it's just me and andrea we're building a team of people as well it's not yeah. just us two. i work with ros and we're exactly the same i always think well and that you just you need that other person to bounce ideas off in We'll come on to that and why move is so important for me particularly, because that is the point of when you're on a business on your own. So much goes round in your head and you've got necessarily nobody to keep you accountable, nobody to bounce ideas off or ask advice. So had, so move, had, I never realised this then, move had already started, move online, it had gone online before Andrew joined. Yeah, yeah, it was. A, That's why I gave, I gave Mark a little thing. Mark, have you got it there? Mark is the founder of Move Online, so I sent him this for the anniversary. So to sit oh. on his desk with the date on it, one year, Mark Waldron, founder of Move Online. So it was your first birthday on Friday? Wednesday. Yeah. Wednesday, uh, last Wednesday, week. Was the, Wednesday was the first time we ever did Move Online. And I don't even know if I called it Move Online, I might have, but it was just, let's come online. And I know those people are struggling in this COVID thing, this lockdown thing. Some, They'll just be for a couple of weeks. What I've done is two weeks before that, networking, which we were, I was running at the time, uh, which is networking and walking in this event called Doors of a Weekend. That had stopped because of the you're not meant to be mingling with people with this, you know, this COVID. And I said to everyone at the end of our walk, we normally go to a cafe, and that's good where we have a chat, and it's that in itself is like a, a bit of a mastermind. We're just chilling, having a coffee. And I said, let's go online using this thing called zoom everyone's saying what what's zoom like it's this thing you don't don't worry about it you know you'll never catch on download no. it. you'll you'll probably use it a few times uh, over the next two weeks of lockdown and um we've got people on and everyone's like well my business has stopped and this has happened and this so i just natural instinct for let's give everyone a turn and okay rod rod walls and no, no relation to me how are, you, how are you doing what's the problem at the moment can anyone help you and then we went around each person. At the end, everyone was just, that was amazing. Like just having a chat with people and getting some different viewpoints. That worked, that was, that worked well, I'll come on next week. So what I started doing was every weekend, I would do one for networking. But then I realized within a week, why not, Why don't we offer this on LinkedIn to people? There'll be business owners who just want to get together. Yeah. And that's what started it. I just said, let's have a, a Tuesday morning and a Thursday afternoon. So it's two days, two times, gives people enough you know, if someone says I can't do the morning because of the kids or the afternoon. And within probably two weeks, we had 20 people signed up to both events. And then I ran them all the way from the, the March all the way to June, which is when Angie first came on. Um, so at that point, we, we had two Wednesday groups and the other three. So we had five groups at that point. And then since then, we've gone on to do a, a set, like another one and the one in America. So we've ended up with eight, eight in total. And you're just about to launch another one in America as well. So it's got, and that just came about on a conversation. You just decided you were like, when shall we do it? And then you were like, yeah, we'll just do it next week. Sarah, I think yeah. you were part, you were part of that. Was part of it, but it was more that I was involved as in, I was sat there and it was just amazing to watch you both go, oh, yeah. Yeah, we could just do it next week. And I loved, it was, it was like contagious seeing you just go, so what's the worst that can happen? And you went for it. And every week since there's been more than enough people coming along and then they all signed up and it's just growing and growing again. Yeah. Well, Do you know, that must feel pretty... That, over that, here, that, you've got a standing, if you like, but over there, nobody knows who either of you are and you've just somebody stopped. Asked, somebody asked me why, why, why America? And it wasn't because it was America. Um, it was very much about wanting to make sure our goal is, is to make sure we have a global presence. So if we don't start, when do we start? So um, that impetus of that conversation was like, okay, let's just do it because if yeah. you procrastinate about anything in life, personally or within business, there's always a reason why you can't. So sometimes it's best to put a date down, 
date stamp, big into date stamp, date stamp it, and then go, okay, what do we need to do to get the, that's exactly yeah. what we did. Well, I was just going to say on the comments for people that are watching, because there's quite a few, if you've currently got any business challenges or anything that you're struggling with, just pop it in the comments because we can all look back at it later. But the other th reason I asked that is because Andrew and Mark are really good at when you tell them something, giving you a day and pinning you down to taking action on that. And for me, that's one of the crucial things about Move. Is that something that you'd like I think automatically of hits in his first video, that's like the thing that springs into my mind. But was that ever something that you planned the accountability side of it before or has that just come as part of me? That's part of coaching though. So oh, yeah. um, it, all the years I've been done coaching, as soon as somebody says something, you can feel there's a passion looking at their eyes, looking at their body language, you go, okay, how do you make this happen? How do we make a traction change? Because people are very have lots of friends and family that go, yeah, I'm sure you will one day. Of course you will. And there's that emotional attachment as a business coach. You sort of listen to the words, look, listen past the words, because sometimes what somebody says to you isn't what they're after. You, yeah. you make sure that they're in line with what they're going to say. And they want to say it, then it's okay. Then, then you move to the next level, which is to say, okay, when, how, how are you going to do it? When, by, and what you need to do to get there. Um, and that just becomes a natural stance. So when we're on move and somebody says something, the natural thing is just to ask them that question straight away. And if, by if the way... About Chelsea, go on. By the way, Mark and I do the same thing to each other. So oh, just, no. we don't just do it to people we're working with. We will challenge each other all the time. We're like, can we, when we, okay, when's that going to be done by? We've got a big challenge in our diary for April. Um, and the only way we will get there, and do you know what? If we don't put a date on, it won't happen. Because we will just, like every other human being, let it roll. Because You don't it's need to say what it is, but what is the date? Have you set the date? Well, that's all right then. I was just going to challenge you to set the date if you'd not done it already. Oh, yeah. It's, it's in mind. writing. Our date's in writing. Yeah. Oh, I love that. So, and I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what it. I'll tell you what it is because I'm very oh. much into accountability. We are putting our first paid um, online training program out by the uh, last day of April. Amazing. Right so we will share the links for the two free ones because some of my Please. team have already seen those, and we'll put them at the bottom of here. But tell us how that came about because the first one. I mean, literally any business owner in the world needs to do that. It was, is it called Get More Customers in 2021? If yeah, exactly what it's called. Exactly yeah. what it's called. And it's all about networking because there's tons of ways to get customers and get business coming in. But one thing we, we, we do and have used ourselves to grow our businesses uh, is networking. It's networking skills, relationship skills. And if you do that well, it's a long game. So you don't get tons of customers next week. But over time, you get you get more than you can handle and that's the beauty of it and the amount of people we see and move following the advice we've given over the last however long they've been in whether it was you know last this time last year or six months and I'm, slowly but surely they say this is working you know this i'm a constant i'm i'm, I'm a consistent on linkedin people keep dming me saying they've been watching me for months and then yeah. they're asking about my products and then you know look at aj it's someone who i coach personally and he's got He's, he's just had this busiest week. He's just up the wall. And I'm, I've got a coaching session with him tomorrow. And I've got, he's going to be made up with what we do because he's already thinking like not the way he should or the way he normally does. And I'll be doing stuff with him where at the end he'll be like, oh yeah, this is good. And then he'll have an amazing week just because of that one sort of hour coaching session. So that's how it is. It makes a big difference. There's lots of people, um, Laura's just talking about how she's got you as her coach. Well, I've got you both as my coaches now, so I feel very fortunate for that. Um, so tell people who are on the call, who are on watching now or might be watching on replay, we've mentioned Move quite a bit now. What is the reason or why should they come along to Move and what will they experience? I can tell them, but you two can tell them in the very best of ways. Uh, it's, it's so simple because... Whether you're a business owner, a professional, just if you're neither of them, even if you haven't got a job, <clears throat> everyone's got struggles. And if there's one thing that's become like evidently clear over the last 12 months, especially with COVID, anybody that doesn't feel good mentally or in business or physically, as soon as they speak to somebody, they feel loads better. But it's not just speaking to somebody as well. It's the quality of the person you're speaking to. So you can go and speak to your, your mates, but if your mates are sort of like you and maybe a bit negative, it's it's great to get it out, but you probably won't get good advice. In Move, 
especially if anyone's ever gone to network events because we used to call it a network event but it's not it's a personal and business development event and in network events what you find this is especially if anyone's ever heard of bni that's a sort of the best one i would say and there's other ones that are really good maybe smaller more local um there's always the top 20 percent of people who are just amazing network they understand that they get it they know it's about helping people and then there's like the chunk of people who are they're okay but they don't really add too much value but they're not bad people and then there's that bottom 20 percent who are just there to, to sell, sell. There to sell, sell, sell pitch yeah, yeah, yeah. you don't even want to speak to them so imagine grabbing the top 20 percent of people at a network event and sticking them all together that is literally what we've got in move but instead of doing business networking and just talk about business like to get customers we're talking about helping each other in any challenge you've got whether it be a business challenge whether you need to use social media whether business is great but you personally in a physical way or a mindset way or a relationship way need some help and assistance when you get that every week off the right people your life changes like it literally changes I that's, love that's why it's a common theme and move isn't it where most so many people and obviously laws just put it there uh, so thanks very much um people literally say since i've come to move my life has changed it's, like, it's amazing to see it is and i think for me i love your introduction in move when we have the meetings and say it's great having a fantastic all firing business but if your relationships are no good and you've got no money or you're overweight it's all those things and it's tying it all up and i think in my first session we did the little web thing between me and you two with the all the different points and it was so no. weird to see how heavy my focus was on business and wealth and money at that time that everything else was suffering and now it's starting to expand and i really feel like that's something that the coaching but for me it's move it's those people every week it's layla and hits that voice note me and say how have you got on with your steps how are you getting on with this what are you doing it's that accountability those friendships and not at the minute not even to do with business although we are doing little bits together it's more about those relationships so it's really suitable for everybody isn't it yeah, yeah I, what i would say about move is it is incredibly insightful that's the first thing and it, there's no agenda as in there is an agenda that the hosts use but the um, members don't have an agenda so the focus and the change of conversation is very different every week because it just takes one person to bring a topic up and that just literally sends shockwaves to people to go actually i feel like that or i think i've got an issue with that and then next minute it's opened up um in some people's world a can of worms that they didn't ever want to open but some people a can of joy that they want to share and that really amalgam uh, sort of evolve brings people together in that it's emulsifying that they go, actually, it's okay not to be okay. It's okay to be really happy. Because somebody's really happy. When I'm happy, people want to go, well done. And they want to support you. But when things aren't great, people also want to support you. It is um, to see that. It when is. And, it, it, and, and that's the beauty of it for me. I've just read, uh, Gillian's just written there, be careful what you say about these two guys, but you're outside your comfort zone. And that's quite a growth. Um, do you know what? Something that happened this week, and um, we were actually on a coaching call and we talked about imposter syndrome and we just had this light bulb moment of wow imposter syndrome we all have and we all will continue to have but the word imposter syndrome is very negative imposter is you, is you're doing something wrong and it's not right and you shouldn't be doing it and syndrome is normally connected to a disease or some of some medical history mm -hmm. so mark and i um have rewritten the rule book and the word imposter syndrome needs to go because we need to have, we need to have imposter syndrome because that drives our um, agility to be better. It brings us the ability to step out of our comfort zone and grow. And without it, we become stagnant. So our adrenaline is running through our body when we have an imposter syndrome, and we're most probably the most sparkiest we can be. Yeah. But that shouldn't have a, a, a flag or a badge of imposter syndrome because that those two words are negative. Yeah. yeah. So um, if I'm really honest, it's on our agenda. We're not going to share the words at the moment because it's a work in progress, but we're going to come up with a positive tag that every time you hear it, you turn yeah. it from a negative to a positive, and it's about growth and change. And I believe that's exactly what MOVE is about. It's about growth and change. It is, and it's the, it, lit, it is the word MOVE, isn't it? You are moving yeah. forward in your life, in your relationships, in your health, yeah. and business, and all those things all together. And you can genuinely ask any question now i ask all my team to come along and 
um, it's becoming more and more apparent the more that they come along somebody else says that or lots of people are commenting saying that everybody needs each other to be there and I think for me it is really in lockdown when so many people were thinking this is the end everything's going terribly you two were like we're going to mix it up and throw this huge big bomb in there that really kind of helps everybody out and I think it's just been a massive massive success so our plan is huge by the way these plans that we're at right where we're at right now is our is our starting phase and we have so many exciting plans where we want to be and what we want to do the problem is we we also have a problem that we get a little excited and want to do everything now so we have to pull ourselves back like everybody else does and go no pause that wait for that because we're just focusing on this this week this month this day Roz calls me here excited puppy because I get an idea and then I just start going at it and trying to do it all at once because I get too excited. So I guess that's that feeling of being passionate, but that's where you two working together can slow each other down a little bit. So a couple of just quick questions before I let you go. Have you ever felt in this business or in any others about giving up and how have you overcome that? I'm just like, yes. Do you want to go first, Andrea? I reckon you've... You probably had them more than me, certainly this last year. Well, the last year, I can honestly tell you, I have been on screen and cried with Mark uh, with the stress, the frustration, the fear, the anxiety. And I've also cried on screen on move events as well. I haven't held it back. I've gone on. I've sometimes not put my camera on. And then I've gone, listen, guys, I'm feeling really, really vulnerable. Um, I've actually got a vulnerability poem. I wish I'd dated it, Mark, um, that I wrote this vulnerability poem. Um, which is all about vulnerability and sharing vulnerability, which I'm going to type up. I wish I dated it. So I can I'm find not... out the date, Sandra. Say again. I can find out the date because you you did a, a post on LinkedIn not too long after, within days. So okay. it would be in whichever meeting was before that. So once I've got an idea, I'll look, I'll look back at the meetings because we'll have it recorded. Good. So I'm going to read it to you, which was never the plan, but I've just picked it up. And it's, it's quite yeah. emotional to me. So I'm going to read it to you. It's not... I say a poem, it's not really a poem, but it's just how I've written it. Vulnerability, I believe, needs to be a, a, a response that we put out in business. It's okay to be vulnerable. And if you are vulnerable, it's finding that accountability partner and having resilience to move forward. So I believe in a corona coaster, and we have been like this for a long time. It's how long you stay in this bottom bit. So your vulnerability is okay for a short period, but stay there, it's dangerous. And that's why you need people around you. So I've written V is for vision, never lose it. You, ultimate, the ultimate destination, it is in your hands. L, laugh, laugh every day. Serotonin is a happy hormone. N, nurture the feeling. They are there for a reason. E, emotion, embrace. If you're happy to show a, a smile, be happy to show a tear. R, rapport. Showing vulnerability will build authenticity with fellow business owners. A, attitude. Have an attitude to win, always want to win. B, balance. Accept the challenge, balance the issues. What really is important to you today, next week, next month, next year? L, lean in. Learn from others, lean in. E, energy. Have the energy to move on. Don't stay where you are, move forward, move. Count the seconds, there's 86,400 seconds. Don't waste them. Wow. I love that. And if you can get a date on it, even better. And was that during in the in-between then? Like, the I was life. having a very dark, I was having some very dark times. And yeah, um, I was just around uh the you know, Mark was really a center fuel for me for that. But I had all the Mark, uh, move members that were just listening to me and I just came on screen and talked about stuff that was going wrong. Um, but yeah, I haven't read that back out. It's maybe quite emotional. I haven't read that, it just happens to be on my hey, desk. Kaylee, one of um, a lady in my team has just put this is literally welling me up so real and so true. Oh, and Davina's put loves that, so yeah. Oh, and Laura's on it as well. They're all you've got everyone crying now, um, Andrea. So, um, yeah, so you have felt in that position then. And what did get you through? Was it those kind of things of that vision and that focus? I, I do believe I have resilience and were, um, and I do believe all the things that happened in my life prior gives you the skill set to deal with stuff but what I did realize that it was okay to tell people I'm not okay I was okay you know I can I can tell you 20 times I have rung Mark up in the last six months and said I'm having a really bad day today 
and he'd listen to me and then he'd go okay let's move on then so he'd let me have my moment he would let, let me reflect and then he'd go okay let's get back to business um and that's exactly what i needed I, I needed my time to say how i felt and then if it was really bad i mean i was making people redundant we had cash flow issues i was closing businesses down it wasn't just one thing it was just a momentous amount of things um and i do believe that I, you know i got inner strength from i get power from helping people you know that sounds really weird but if i'm coaching and I, i'm helping if i can help one person that's like refueling me it's like me going to the petrol station and putting diesel in the tank or petrol in the tank i can then fight my own fears and my own issues because i've helped somebody over here and that's what gives me passion yeah and i remember it. mark saying on i think there was a move meeting that you missed and you were you'd made some people redundant the previous week and he was re retelling how so many of them had found other jobs they'd actually been they'd gone into situations that had found new opportunities it had all kind of had and i know it won't happen exactly like that for everybody but it just shows that right at the root of it you wanted to help everybody yeah and you know what i gave people redundancy they weren't even entitled to it as in financially because they didn't fit the, the 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 stats but i just knew i needed to pay them i did what i, I had to do and yeah, Mark, Mark is very good at bringing you back to reality. So he would say to me, so how did you feel at that moment? So even though we coach other people, there's also some coaching going on between us because mm -hmm. that's, how, that's how we motivate and move each other forward. Yeah, and if you, I can't ever imagine you wanting to give up, Mark. I know, I know you probably have had them days, but you do seem very <laughs> focused. Yeah, to be fair. Um, in fact, before I answer that, how long will we staying on for? Like an hour or soon? Or... It's supposed to be half an hour, but I just can't stop asking you questions. So if you need to go, I thought, right. I thought it was like an hour or something. But if there's anyone in the audience that wants to ask questions, you know, business yeah, questions. Yeah, type them into the chat and we'll pull them. Yeah, you know, your, your biggest challenge right now, think about what that is. What's your biggest struggle? Um, what, are you, what are you just typing into Google and YouTube, whatever that is? Ask yeah. the question now and we'll see if we can help. But if, while you're doing that, um, to be honest, yeah, I don't, I don't ever really get to the point where I think I just want to give up. But I, in construction, I did get to the point where I, I assessed the situation and thought, is this best? Is this business going to be long term? Is it working for me? Like, do, should I keep doing this? And it, because there's a point. There's like the if anyone hasn't seen it, there's this. Um, well, there's a few analogies, but there's the one like the gold miner, and you see one one digging a tunnel, and there's one below, and the one. <clears throat> on the bottom sort of stops with like a foot to go and he's just sat there like he's out of breath thinking i'll give up and the person above keeps going that extra foot and ends up finding all the gold yeah but there is an element of like where when do you stop at something it's hard to know um but i analyzed my construction business and realized that the construction industry is up is absolutely failing and to have a big co construction company typically most of them end up going out to business you know look at carillion the biggest one goes bust five billion dollar uh, five billion pound company um <clears throat> so after looking at the the way construction set up i realized well the only way it works is usually when the boss of the company is on the job doing the job because usually that's they're cutting out paying somebody for like the project managing because as soon as you throw that extra bit of money on you, you're too dear to compete with the people who are the people doing work themselves and i thought for me to be really like competitive in this industry I need to go back to being on the tools and be the boss and be on the job and do one at a time. And I didn't like that idea because I thought that one, I can't scale, two, I've got high ambitions. So at that point it was like, do we give up? And I don't think I gave up. I decided I'm gonna stop this and stop. And that's what made me focus and think, what would I actually do if I was a millionaire? 10 million, 50 million, probably don't have to work ever again. What would I do every day? And I thought I'd, I'd still literally be logging in saying, anyone need any help on social media or I'd, I'd go and speak to people. Steph always says, what she always says, would you still do the same thing that you'd always say when you, if you won the lottery? Because uh, she always says, what, what would you do when you win the lottery? And my first thing was always, I don't know what, I'd go out and I'd buy tons of pizzas and just go to Liverpool and give them to all the homeless people. Like that's my first thing. I, the first thing I'd want to do is just buy loads of pizzas and just go around giving them all to I don't know why that in particular, that. but that's just my thing. And, I, and she, she, she she asked me the other day and said, would you still do that? I'm like, yeah, 100%. So that's, I don't know, it's just, it's nice to give back, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but I quit the construction company. I thought I'm not going to do this anymore, but it was based on realistic expectations of what's working, what's not, what will work in the future. 
And I thought for me to scale a big construction company, turn over millions, I'll probably end up going out of business because it's too competitive or I won't enjoy it because I'll be on the tools. And either way, I don't like that. And, and by having that and leaving a, a company that's paying me decent money, and Steph used to say, well, what are you going to do for your money? And I was like, I don't know. I just know that I'm doing what I want. And somehow, some way, we will get, we, I will get money coming in. I'll add so much value. People will want to give money, me money for something. That, that reminds me of like crushing it, you know, in Gary Vee, when he talks about um, doing what you're passionate about and making that become the thing that you earn money from. Because when you're enjoying what you're doing, you're enjoying the journey. You're never waiting to get to when I get to this, when I get to that, when I get to that. But yes, yeah. as you've been talking, we've had some questions popping yeah. in. So um, yeah, so Kaylee's is how to deal with rejection. Um, she's currently reading Rejection Proof. So you can see from Move Online, I've been recommending, they've all just started buying, how does it make the book go faster? We've, we literally pass on books. But um, yes, that is the big one. Tell us about that one, because I'm almost halfway through now, but yeah what about rejection let's go with rejection with kaylee first how to deal with rejection uh, there's a few things with that the first one is a, a rejection from someone it's just if it's a no it's just no for now that's the first it's always usually the case um in the future it could be a yes or they may just not be the right person but the, the thing is rejection in any way is the more you the more you can get rejected the more chance of there being an, a yes so it's like for every, the law of averages says for every hundred people you do a cold call to or speak to or pitch a product or in any way where, there's, where you're actually offering something for someone to make a yes or no decision, for every hundred, you will get one person. That's, that's the stats. Five people will be interested. 20% of them will say, go on then. So for every hundred calls you can make or every hundred engagements, you'll get one. So re to be rejected is, for me, this is flipping it on its head. How good's that? I've got one of those 99 out of the way. So let's do yeah. another one. And that's yeah. the way I can see it. I just want to get my 99 out of the way to get to the one that will say yes. So it's a simple way to see it. And it's learning from them, isn't it? Every time you can Every learn time. from them. How good is it? If you ask your client why they've said no, and be honest, and say, if you don't mind me asking, like, well, why is it no? Just just so I know, can I can I be better? Is, the, is it the product? Is it the way I pitched it? And if the, the ones who are actually genuine nice people will say, to be fair, it's this. And then you go, okay, ah, okay. I'll, I'll I know that for the next time. Or, yeah. What you say, yeah. Just, to, just to reframe the word no. Uh, no is a learned behavior. So no is a behavior that we will learn from our teachers, our parents, our peers, our friends. Um, but that is just a word. It's two letters. That's it. But we have then taken that into a negative connotation. Um, no point when that somebody said no to us the first time, no to not put something in our mouth as babies, would it be negative? They were doing it to save our lives, they were doing it to not make us ill or to choke. So it actually had a positive connotation. But we as humans have taken the word no and made it a negative connotation. Yeah. So the rejection point there is, you know, yeah, everyone talks about this learning curve. There's no way when you get rejected from a job interview at that point or um, uh, opening a new business or start trying to sign somebody up uh, for body shop and and you think you've got somebody who's going to become a a new uh, a new person and they suddenly go oh I don't want to no that isn't negative that is somebody just showing the truth so we as the receiver need to understand that it wasn't about us it was about them yeah so once we accept that the word no coming from another person is their, is their issue, not ours. We're just receiving some words that have been sent to us. Then suddenly we go, okay. And once you can just go, okay, the emotion is cut. I always talk about, I love that. And I'm the same. I talk about when you go to a restaurant and after you've had a meal, they come round and ask you if you want any desserts. Now, I've never said no to dessert. That's just how I am. I always say yes. But when, there's, when you say no to them, they don't go away offended, do they? Or like frustrated. They're just an answer. A question and you're giving them an answer and they're collecting response. that answer and going away with it. Yeah. But the response is owned by the person that said it, not the person that's listening to it. And there goes the biggest problem. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Everyone's commenting on that saying, mind blown. Oh, they're loving it. Laura had got a question in. I'm just trying to scroll back up. The yes. thing that's not about rejection or learning from stuff is 
the more you learn about stuff, the better you get. And I can honestly look back at every single time something has not gone my way, whether it was a rejection or just something that bad happened, and yeah. not learn something from it. So either way, you either get the result you want, amazing, or you don't, and you just okay. add it to your skill set. So either way, it's just a positive experience. What's the the the, the baseline thing in everything? The, the thing that's there, the common denominator. You're doing something. You're taking an action. It yeah. uh, comes down to that word. You're moving. You're doing something, and that's why that's why that word's so powerful. Absolutely, I'm loving the fact McDonald's workers never offended when asked for large fries. When you say no, <laughs> it's true. Is it? I mean, again, never said no to when they asked me if I want fries. But Obviously. hey, Sarah, we're, me and me and Andrew are going to start upselling to you when when we go check. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nigel always says I'm every um, salesman's dream. Whenever I come home, he's always like, you went to buy that? How have you bought all this? And I'm like, because it all goes with it. It's all part of the package. Um, so you were just going to talk about a book then, Andrea. But I was going to come on and ask you, kind of, who were your mentors? Who's inspired you? Or were there any particular books or podcasts? So that's quite a loaded question, but I'll just let you guys run with it. Because I've just started reading... Um, will it make the boat go faster? And honestly, Matt, I've literally screenshot about 30 or 40 little quotes to share with my team every day because I'm just light bulbs going off constantly with that book. I just love it. This is an amazing book. Yes. It's in my desk. But my number one ever book, and I've got to tell you a very quick story. I was on Clubhouse the other day and it was a book room. I'm not a massive reader. I'm, I choose the books I read, and then if I read them, I embrace them, and they become part of me, and I just love them. So I don't have 100 books I recommend. I just have a, I have a, a select few that I really resonate with. So they're all talking about some stuff which is really high-level stuff that was, like, way above my pay grade, um, like NASA books and, you know, um, just just a different level. So I'd already chosen, I was, I was going to talk about Fish, which is my favorite number one book. Yes. And I literally thought, oh, I'll just do with make, make the goat, will, will it make the boat go faster? Because that's a bit more of an in intellectual book. And I thought, sod that, no. So I then talked about Fish. And Fish has four principles, which is play, uh, which is play is a way to recover the magic of childhood. As an adult, it is necessary to maintain the sense of wonder and discovery. If we don't have if we don't have play in our world or our life, then it's a little bit boring in my book. Choose your attitude. How often do we get fed up because we get a gas bill, electricity bill as we walk out the door, and then that just puts us in a mood, or we're late because our kids couldn't tie those shoelaces, and that meant that you were late leaving the door, and then you choose your attitude because yeah. it's just a roller coaster of negativity. Be there. This one is my biggest one. Is if you're about to Take a phone call, listen to the phone call, don't be writing an email at the same time, or have the phone on your on your top of your shoulder and then be trying to talk to the, the kids' sign language time to get them out the door, um, or vice versa. And the next one is make their day. Yeah, Sarah, being there, done it. Is a moment. it yeah, but I love, I love that book for that reason. Make their day. Um, you know, make the internal customer, which is the, your staff, your the people you work with, but the external customer, make their day, make them feel special, make them want to come back to you. So fish, they're the four fish principles. And you know what? I was on Clubhouse with some very intellectual people who are way above my pay grade. And which book do you think got voted the best recommendation of Clubhouse? Fish. fish. And I actually went, you know, Andrew, you nearly doubted yourself and you didn't speak about it. And I'm so pleased you did. So that just, that just, reinforces that everybody from a mum or a dad, a brother, a sister, a business owner, uh, somebody that's starting off in business should read Fish. End it also reinforces to me that it's okay when I have wobbles and doubt myself because I can't imagine you doubting yourself. And the fact that you, having recommended that book, that then thought, oh, I don't know if I should talk about that one, that really surprises me, but in a good way. You, you know why? Because Na the NASA man was talking about, you know, um, Physics and the and the space. How to land on the moon and kind of what? Like, I'm about to put, re, uh, refer them to a, a book that has a hundred pages in about business about and it's about fish at the end of the day in a fish market in Seattle. So I thought I'd, I'd go a bit more up market, which I still love this book. Don't get me wrong, yeah. not my number one. Anyway, fish. I got think it is my number one. I've got to be honest. I, I think I am in love with. Will it make it's the book good. It's good, but not my number one. Okay. Mark, any recommendations? 
Um, oh, do you know what? I've got loads of good books that I, that, that I think they're good. I'm reading Atomic Habits right now by I'm James. I'm just arguing yeah. something on LinkedIn with a girl who's just said she's reading the same book. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll have to have a look. Um, that's it's just a good book. I mean, everything we do in our lives are habits, every single thing. It's so it's if you can control them, you get to control the outcomes that you get. You know, if, if anyone's sat there not getting the right outcomes, it's largely down to your habits and having the the cues around you that cause the reaction to the habit to, to take the action to, to form the habit. So if you can get if you can master that, you'll be better. So go and read Atomic Habits, but a good book, especially for, I mean, you know, a lot of your guys as well, you know, people any in any business, anyone who's in business trying to sell anything. Um, the Jelly Effect is a good one. I read it about 10 years ago, and I was introduced to it, funny enough, by Andrew's old business partner called Bob, and Bob introduced me to B&I, which is networking, and it's, it's crazy how we've all ended up sort of connected, mm -hmm. but... Bob said, it's a good book. And the guy who wrote it is going to be at this B&I meeting as a, as a guest and come and have a look and seeing this guy called Andy Bounds. And I was introduced to the whole concept of how to network better, how to pitch something. And the main thing in the book, which is something I've then gone on to develop myself and call it something different, which I call it an emotional vision because I, 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 I like going into the nitty gritty detail of well, why is that? And I'm going to like a... Well, not, I'm not a scientist, like, but, you know, I've gone into like more of a an emotional level and stuff. Yeah. And he calls it the afters. He said people are bothered about what you what they what they're going to get after you do what you do. So it's such a, an amazingly simple concept because people. My simple analogy every time is um, I was a builder. Well, I used to build extensions. Well, no one wants an extension. They want what the extension will allow them to do after, as in they'll be able to entertain the friends and family. Be able to have oh, I'm not talking about extensions. Me and you are going to fall down. <laughs> <laughs> my, my one's a proper dog. Can you allow? We don't have issues in, in our company when, when we were training. Well, you live near um, Sheffield. Um, so I used to say to people, I used to play on that, and we, we did get one of our first jobs was a garage conversion, and I said, "Oh, what's what's it for?" She said, "Oh, well, you know, they got, got another kid on the way, and we've only got two. We need might be a playroom or something." And I'd already done similar stuff before where people had converted it into space for the kids. So I said, well, do you know what? One of the things we're, we're specialists in is turning spaces into places for kids. And I knew that that's what's there on, on their mind. They don't want a garage conversion. They want a space for the kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every customer. So that's to me, I thought, well, what is that? Everyone is visualizing something they want. And there's an emotion attached to it, which is what's causing the let's go and do it thing. So it might be emotionally, we don't like that. Let's avoid it. So let's take action. Or we love that idea. That's going to make me happy. Buying a new car, buying a new house, going on holiday, buying the product. Let's go and try and attain that. So it's yeah. an emotional vision. And if you know what someone's emotional vision is, you need to know who your customer is. So you need to know your target market. Work out what the emotional vision is. Then you can start to tailor what you pitch to them. So you don't pitch a, a product and say, do you want to buy an iPhone? It might be more like if you have the best iPhone, you're actually you're you're the, the top of your crew because you have the best one, and yeah. everyone's got the iPhone to what eleven. And family and miles away in lockdown, you can FaceTime these family FaceTime. on. Yeah, you want to work quicker and save an hour so you can go and work out more. Well, you know this phone helps you work out more. It's not an iPhone. It's it's something that's going to help you work out more because it saves time because it's faster. There's so many ways to look at people's problems and what their emotional vision is. So if I can take, if I can get anyone to take anything away, think about your customers' emotional visions and tap into that rather than sell it the product. That is great. And Laura's put put profit first on your list of books. I've seen you do a little video on that, Laura. So that is definitely one that I've just put on my list. And um, someone's just asked any good books for leaders, so leadership style books. Yeah, one quick one. Kaylee's asked about the book I said. It was called The, the Jelly Effect by Andy Bounds. And it's, it's, we'll find the link and share it in there. The yeah, there's two versions, a, li a lime green one and an orange one. And it's the orange one is the more up-to-date one. Fabulous. Were you going to say a book for leadership? Um, yeah, if you're starting off with leadership, um, fish, absolutely. Yeah. Fish. It's, about, it's about empowering, it's about culture and leading, absolutely. And that's yeah. what's a, a, a good book to read um, would be by Jocko Willink. So he's an ex-Navy SEAL, and he's, he's got a couple of books, but one's called um, Extreme Ownership. And then his latest book is called The Dichotomy of Leadership. Oh. 
I've not heard of him before. I'll have to put that. Yeah, that was like, I mean, people people go, oh, Mark's just, you know, he's just dead, like, just gets to the point and he's, he won't let us off and he'll, he knows. Imagine me times 100, a Navy SEAL. He's like, this yeah, guy, well, he'd he he make me scared. Like, he's he's a good guy. He's I, um, on Instagram. I quite like some of Aunt Middleton's books. Like, um, do you know from SAS? I love some he's of like, books. This guy's like Aunt Middleton, but on another level. And oh. he's... The company now is about leadership. He actually he's out the army and he trains people now. Yeah, well, I listened to I don't know if it was fear bubble, but I was on a plane coming home and I'd had my holiday and I was like, right, I need to get psyched back up for work. And I got off the plane and my husband's like, Are you all right? I'm like, I literally feel like I've been battered and bruised because he's just been like, Stop making excuses, get it done, do this, do that. But and I literally had felt it drummed into me. It was um brilliant. Awesome show, Sarah. Lasagna and these two. Oh, I don't know if you mean that's Alan, by the way. If anyone me and Alan's easy oh, yeah. lasagna. Yes. Oh it's Alan from our thirsty group. Talking about lasagna, amazing, perfect. Yes, he's in our thirsty group, isn't he? So we will share all the links for move below, which is fabulous. Finish on your final top tip for people who whether they're in a business right now that they're happy with, whether they're in a lifestyle, what is the key? For me, move says it all because it's about moving and not staying stagnant. But what is your tip for people to go away and think, how do they get themselves started with whatever it is they're wanting to do? I have one, yeah. one phrase. On. Never say, I wish I had. So if you go to do something, so I was given this as a um, when I was in my 20s. Somebody said to me, <clears throat> um, I was going to go and live in America. Should I go, not go? And they said, they walked past me and they went, never say I wish I had. That person I'm still in touch with, I can't ever remember saying it to me. It was the first quote I ever put on my business cards um, and I stand by it all the time. So I can't make a decision. I always say to myself, never say I wish I had. So am I going to look back and regret not making that decision? So that is my wow. gift. Really. Never say I wish I had. That's powerful, that. Mm. Mark, you beat it. My, no, my, me. my simple mantra is aim to be an expert while always remaining a student. It's simple. It's simple. Always want it's and I know on a bigger picture, it's like try and be the best you can be, try and win at everything. But yeah. also still accept that you know nothing. Right. You've got to learn every day. Yeah. Um I go into LinkedIn. People go, Mark, you're good at LinkedIn. I go into LinkedIn rooms on uh on Clubhouse. Just to listen to people who've got forty thousand followers, I haven't got twelve or thirteen thousand. I want to see how have they got there and learn from them. I don't just think oh, I'm doing well and I get good engagement. Why do I need to learn anymore? So aim to be an expert while well, always remaining a student. And to be fair, for the question you've actually said there, someone who wants to know what they should do or how do they get started or are they on the right track, all this your values, your mission, and your vision. You that stuff we've done with you, we do with all our clients. It's at the it's within the first couple of books in a 52 workbook series. It's important to know because even just by doing that, you can often then say, oh dear, I am actually not on the right track. I'm not even in the right industry. I love that. So let's go and pursue that. At least, at least you didn't spend 10 years in the in the industry you didn't love or the, the job you didn't like. So your vision, mission and values. Um, and that's again, that's the type of stuff we talk about on Move Online. It's the yeah. stuff that we're going to be doing in future courses that we bring out. So. As long as people you know are sticking on it. Do you know Go what's on. really different? The amount of people I've had coaches, had mentors, I had, you know, business advice is they are made to do a vision, mission, and value piece for um a grant for grant, ticker box. And the yeah. thing that we do is we will embed it into your head, embed it into your business, and we'll keep it alive, won't we, Sarah? Um, it's when we're not looking or not noticing. Yeah. But that's it because it's not doing it because we uh, we have been told by somebody you should go through this process. We're doing it because we believe it is absolutely the cornerstone of every business. Every business, no matter if you're taking a pound or a billion dollars or a billion pounds, if you haven't got that cornerstone right, it will start to crack yeah. and it will be successful. So we're going to share the link that they can um, click on and they can come along and try a move session. Um, yeah and come and see what moves all about but there's also going to be the two links for the two free courses um in preparation to see the ones that are coming in april that you can sign up for and pay for which is exciting 
And Very. I'll say as well, the two free courses, it's not like they're just free and no, they, they mustn't be much value. There's no upsell. We're not saying do this so we can try no. and sell something else. It's solely there because we're just seeing all these people in, in Move and in LinkedIn and having these problems. Let's help them out. We just made a course. It takes well, about... Let know what the second course, the title yes, of the second, the second course. course. Sorry, yeah. It's called Mindset for Success. And it's all about people are struggling thinking, am I going to be getting money at the moment? I mean, I'm struggling getting clients. People are leaving me or I struggle to find new clients. And it's all this, unless you're thinking right, how can you operate right, both yeah. in business and in life? So it's all about a, a good mindset. It's got practical examples in them, simple techniques you can do just to sort of get yourself on track at the start of a day so you can have a, an amazing day. So Mark, just before we finish, tell, tell people when we wrote it and why. We we were on Move Online. There was in one week, I think the amount of people I kept saying, "Oh, you know, look, I'm I'm struggling right now. I mean, I've I'm losing clients. I'm not feeling good. Another lockdown. It's everyone's feeling quite." depressed and anxious of the future we thought we were about to do a course on a totally different topic and we just flipped it around and with a two weeks yeah. of mini course and again give ourselves a date we said we'll have it by that date got it out by that date and everyone did it and said you know what that's just by doing that 30 minute course if that you know 30 minutes 40 minutes totally changed the way i perceive my situation right now some people were in move and thinking i might have to quit move because I, I just don't think it's going to work for me i don't think i've got the right business and all this and after doing that course there's still a move now months later saying and the flourishing it's yeah. sort of, you know it, it might be free but it's a powerful resource guys tap into it and uh, share the shares the links it's incredible and for me it's helped me but it's not just helped me it's helped my teams as well and it's the things you pick up i'm not going to spoil it but Chinese bamboo, like, mind blown. I don't think I'll ever forget that. In fact, I did a power a training for some of my um, team that we discussed the other week, the 79 for the regional manager. And one of the slides was just a picture of Chinese bamboo, which prompted me to be able to talk about it. So thank you so much for tonight. It has been amazing. I've just, I could chat to you all night so we could carry on forever, but my amazing assistant trims it all down into a very i'll be sharing this on youtube but he trims it all down into a little one for linkedin so we'll share that this week as well and just a huge thank you to both of you i will see you both in the morning anyway because i've got my coaching with you guys in the morning and then move this week so have a lovely evening thank you very much we just say thank you you are a fabulous hostess so many very natural interviewing as well so thanks for having us really appreciate it I've loved it's it. Really I've cool, like gone on for hours tonight. Yeah, <laughs> Thanks for any questions and comments. The reason we can't is because I've got loads of water to drink still because we're on move 30. I haven't done my workout yet. I've still got half my steps to do. And, After uh, everything except I've got... Oh, no, I've still got 3,500 steps to do. So I'll be marching during the line it. of duty this evening, giving it some... Yeah. Good old steps, but everything else has been fab. Everybody's popping in the comments. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah um, we appreciate everyone that's commenting and watching, whether you, whether yeah. you did comment or you're just watching and, and being a lurker. Either way, as long as you've got value, we're, we're made up. That's the whole point. Actually, one more thing. We would have commented in the comments, but we can't comment in the main comment thing because we're yeah. with you. So to let people know, Mark and I would normally have commented back, but we can't. Yeah. Well, you can up. go back in afterwards now when you when you connect off. If you want to have a look later, you could always comment on there if there's anything in particular. But, yes, we'll share all of the links. There's free courses and go from there. And I shall see you both in, in the morning. So thank you very much. Share Come into this in real life, guys. Make, make sure um, everyone connects with us on like LinkedIn and stuff. Yes, we'll share your LinkedIn profiles as well. Yeah, we, we put content out virtually daily and it's always yeah. to help people. It's, you know, that's... I, mean, well, that's I think you said problem. I'd watched you for months before I actually sent that message. And then look at what's happened since December. It's been incredible for me. Um, for my, if, if I'm honest, for my family time, as I've said before, more. So yeah. I'm continuing to do that with my business. So, that's And that's, that's me using the Chinese bamboo principle. On yeah. my side, no, I know now there are people watching right now on LinkedIn all over the place who in three months will become a client mm -hmm. or will get involved and move or will say, Mark, I like what you do. I've got someone that I think you can help and become an advocate of what we do with a move. So it's the long game that wins every time. Sarah, 
Thank you so much. No, Bye. thank you. Bye. Bye. All right. Thank, thank you. you guys. Bye. Bye.